Hi everybody, uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, in this video, if you look at the description box below, uh, the PDF to the book of Elijah is finally complete. Um, we reinstalled the proper uh, Hebrew names. Uh, not all the names, just the names for Yah. That's it. Um, I did a little bit of correction in the translation, minor correction, um, for clarity's sake and biblically accurate um it's good it's good i didn't even make notations where i made the corrections because it's not like this translation is a untouchable translation um from studying this text and spending the time that i've spent with it um it's very clear that the text is rooted in hebrew the whatever the original author was of this text it was in hebrew um I could tell by, you know, there was a rule in here that 10 people should assemble for um, for prayer and for worship. That is a Hebraic law. Um, there's one instance of a, a usage of two words, like repeated, to emphasize that that's a Hebrew thing that we see in our Bibles all the time. When something is repeated, it's exclamated, or it will come to pass, or it's, you know, pay attention. Um, so whoever translated this text or you know, the origins of this text is a mystery. But whoever translated it, in English at least, did it through a type of Christian lens, but not exactly a fully learned one or one with the revel revelatory understanding we have now. So I corrected that. Um, just minor corrections. Uh, there were things that needed a little bit of correction. Uh, instances in the text that probably might have thrown some people off. Um, I meditated on it, studied it, uh, made the proper corrections the best I could. Um, uh, it, it's solid. It's solid. Okay. I did, uh, redid the punctuation so it's easier to read, uh, redid capitalizations, uh, proper capitalizations and everything. So found a pretty cool, um, old Holy Bible font. Um, and I do plan to publish this in a book as long as I can figure out the formatting, but that's another can of worms. So I'm going to leave you with a quote from this text. Um, at the very end of this text, it's a literally a prophecy of... Um, can I extend this? Let's see. Give me one second. Okay, here we are. Literally, there's a prophecy. A, a thus says Yahuwah. So let's read it and I'll leave you with it because it's actually pretty cool. Okay, say unto those, this is a lot, apparently Elijah talking to his son Elisha, or his uh, disciple Elisha. Um, say unto those who are seeking the inner vision in these dark days. <clears throat> Thus says El Yahuwah of Israel. Let my elect keep no fellowship with the world, for all their ways are evil before me. Let them to pursue, leave them to pursue their wealth and profit, for they are slaves to their desires. Be ye zealous to carry out every covenant and commandment which ye have received in the ordinances of my house, or ye shall be in the power of the devil, and surely it shall be hard for you at the at the judgment bar. Okay? This is insight into how we could, when we all stand before the face of Yeshua for judgment, what to expect. And I, and I believe these whole heart, wholeheartedly. Faithfully exercise your stewardships according to the holy order of Yahuwah, which I have revealed unto you. Accept willingly, whatever you may befall, I, Yahuwah, have all things in my hands, and take your pleasure in nothing but according to the will of Elohim. Speak only that which is acceptable before your Yahuwah, and lust not after anything which I have not commanded. Thus shall your reward be sure, and you shall stand at the judgment bar without fear. Amen. Now, something that really hit home, okay, is this right here for me. Um, Be zealous to carry out every covenant and commandment which ye have received in the ordinances of my house, or ye shall be in the power of the devil, and surely it shall be hard for you at the judgment bar. Um, anybody who knows me has been following me for years. Um, there was a time I was very deceived. Um, Yah allowed it because when we come out of our deceptions, we get wiser and stronger. And, you know, I was following the whole UFO and alien thing and all that stuff for good reason. But 
eventually when I came to the point where I was full, I fell flat on my face and I didn't have any principal beliefs anymore. Um, I sat on my couch and I just said in my heart, you know what, I'm going to take this Bible and I'm just going to believe it word for word just by faith alone. I'm just going to believe the whole Bible is true by faith alone. And when I said that in my heart, the Holy Spirit told me, he said, he said, stay in my house and I'll give you everything. And I think that's a word for all of us. And what does that mean? It means that staying in the house of Yah, don't be, you know, we don't need to, I don't believe we need to be researching pagan scriptures, um, all that kind of stuff, like uh, Sumerian tablets, all that kind of stuff. Everything we need to know, we can find in the house of Yah, in the, you know what I'm saying? In the holy scriptures, or in the sect of the holy scriptures. We don't have to be going into pagan cultures and studying their texts, because it's all truth mixed with lies. Everything we need to know, we sh should be able to cultivate through Yah's house, okay? So when I read this, I was just like, whoa, because that, that was an exact confirmation, like a lot of the stuff in this text, that I received personally from the Holy Spirit. So I know whoever wrote this text um, was really hearing from Yah. Um, was it Elijah? I don't think so, but it's possible. I don't know, but whoever wrote this text um, new, profound, profound, deep wisdom that most Christians today are um, absent of. Uh, just because, you know, we have a kind of milk-induced understanding of the gospel and that's everything was done on the cross, you know, um, you know, don't tell me what to do and all that kind of stuff. But, but that's not, and, and you know what, we are initially saved by grace through faith. Initially we are, but, um, the word of Yah stands forever. That's the only thing that's going to last forever. Um, we don't have permission to do whatever we want. Um, eventually, we don't. So, um, uh, we have to live by the word of Yah. <clears throat> and um, anyway, in the future, I'm going to be doing some readings on this text. And we're going to be talking about it. Okay, I think this text is very important. And um, again, I'm still investigating in my... The Lost Psalms of David, you know, we hear about this this congregation, right, of the saints in these Lost Psalms of David. But you know what? We hear about that in our Bibles, too. I think, uh, I don't remember the number. I could be wrong. Uh, of course. Uh, it could be Psalm 122. You know what? I'm going to check. If it'll let me do this. Um, yes, Psalm 122, uh, here we go, a, a psalm by David, and exact confirmation what we're reading in his law psalms, and especially what we're reading in this text, which runs parallel to Zechariah 3. Uh, psalm 119 even confirms that David himself had to take an oath. If David was ruler, he sat in a congregation of elders. There was a, co a congregation that you had to get admitted to. And this is coming, and here's another confirmation, for there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Um, so Psalm 122, uh, this stuff confirms what we're reading about, which seems to be foreign to us in our understanding of our Bibles, but this is actually deep biblical doctrine, deep historical truth, uh, likely to be sh just a shadow of what we're going to see in the kingdom, in the millennial reign and beyond. So, um... This is important stuff, guys. Uh, this is what I believe. So, um, all right. Link in the description box below for this PDF. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you're not sick of this text already, but um, this is good to go. I proofread it. Everything. No study notes. I'm not up to that yet. I still have to read the other version of this text. And I want to get to the Psalms of David. Um, there are plenty of cross-references we could put in here showing that this mirrors exactly what's taught in our Bibles in every way. There's only one discrepancy, uh, the last chapter of the book, and it really doesn't matter. He talks about the city of Enoch. Is Enoch supposed to be Yeshua? I don't know. Um, that's really it, but that's really insignificant. All the principles and rules taught in this um, 
in this text perfectly run through scripture. Uh, it absolutely does. And, um, and they, I don't have the verses. Unfortunately, I can't, I don't have the verse, but it's told to us the reason why this is happening is because I wish I could, I wish I could find it. Um, because we're living in dark days that, give me a second. You know what? That's not going to work. But it says something along the lines like, hey, look, this, the re the purpose of this life is just to prepare ourselves to meet Yahuwah in the judgment for when he comes. And that's why, that's the whole idea of living in a separate community in Acts 2, to, in Acts uh, type of community. And this is pre-Christian, I believe. So they had the right idea. And everything runs parallel to our Bibles. We have some New Testament language in here, but I think that's a result of the translator. I, I believe the root of this text is Hebrew. Whoever originally wrote this text wrote it in Hebrew. Whoever wrote this text was a Hebrew. I believe that. So, um, all right, guys. Uh, yeah, I'll be with you. Enjoy. I'll be on later, uh, probably tomorrow.